Okay, I had somebody send me this image wanting to recreate it. I'm going to recreate it for them and show how to put the font on it. I've covered this before in another video, but I'm going to go ahead and do it again on this one. Um, I did tell the person that I could recreate it, but I personally don't like how thin these rings are. I think that would make a really flimsy, cheap looking design, so I'm going to make the rings a little thicker, but I'm going to make it very close to this one okay so first thing I would need to do is get this horseshoe here so I'm going to just manually trace it with the bezier tool by grabbing this selection here and then you just left click and go around the design and drop points where you need them um, looks like they this horseshoe kind of jogs down here to connect to the rings so I'm gonna drop points here now what I'll do on something like this horseshoe is I'm only gonna do half of it there's no point in drawing the whole thing I'm gonna do half of it and then duplicate it that'll make it symmetrical so I cut in the middle there I'll come back up drop a few more points and now I will hold shift and select red to change my stroke to a red and then I'll come into the node editor and um, work my way around here and adjust these nodes adjust the path the contours to match this horseshoe probably if I was making this for myself I would kind of round these corners off here but I'm keeping it similar to the image they sent so I'll just work my way around grab these paths in node editor adjust them to match the contour there and then I always smooth any of them that are smooth contours here I'll select the node and use this option to make it smooth. That'll give you a nice smooth flow. There are no, no jagged edges. Come down here, adjust that. And this here, like I say, normally I would round these, but this is going to be connected to the ring anyway. So basically there, I've made half of that horseshoe. And if I you know, select blue, you can see there I've drawn half of it. I'm going to turn the fill back off. And then they've got a couple circles here. So I'm just going to grab my circle tool. Ah, my stroke's on really big. But if you go to object, fill and stroke, you can do it down here. But once you open your fill and stroke menu, I can come over here to stroke paint and select that and turn the stroke off. Then I can come here to fill select that option there to turn the fill on then you can select your colors I'd normally select them down at the bottom but anyway so then I think these are supposed to be somewhat circles but they're pretty distorted here I guess I'll make them more of an oval kinda like what they had but once you click on your object you get these arrows in each direction you can grab here and stretch it out horizontally or up here and stretch it out vertically or you can grab in the corners and stretch it diagonally but we'll get it similar to what they had and then I'll control D bring this one down here control D bring this one here and that's pretty close to what they had so now I will hold shift and select all three of these and then path union to union those three together. Now since those are cut out, it's hard to see because I have the fill color turned off on this, but if I turn the fill on, say red, you can tell that these are on top. You'll have to be on top to difference. So now I can select these, select that half the horseshoe and hit shift control minus or path difference and that will cut those ovals out of that horseshoe 
So now I've drawn half the horseshoe with the holes. Now I can just control D and flip that duplicated it, flip it over and then I can bring it over here and let it snap. You can see I'm not, I didn't get it quite exactly on half, but I can stretch this out. So now I'm gonna hold shift, select the other half and go shift control plus or path union and that joined my two halves together. Now I'll smooth this node out. This node here could be gotten rid of, but since it's gonna be union to the ring there, it really doesn't matter, so I'll leave it. But Okay, so now I have half of my horseshoe there. And I'm just gonna leave, I'm not, I could stretch it out a little. I guess I'll stretch it, whatever. Now I just need the two outer rings. So I'm gonna grab my circle tool hold control and pull it out at an angle that'll keep it symmetrical now I'm gonna hold shift and select blue and then I'm gonna come over here to the X without holding shift and turn off the fill and like I say you can do that in your fill and stroke menu too you can go to the fill hit the X here that'll turn it off go to the stroke you hit this that'll turn it on hit that it'll turn it off so now I have my stroke there and I think I have my stroke set to a half inch. It's in millimeters right now, but yeah, a half inch. So I'll make it, I have my ratio locked up here. You can lock and unlock that. I'm gonna lock it to keep it symmetrical. And I'll enter 16 inches. And yeah, just bring it up here roughly. Then I can control D because I'll need two rings and I will set the second one at say 12 inches and that's once again with the ratio locked there. So now this is a half inch thick ring and this is a half inch thick ring. I must select this one selected I'm going to hold shift and select this one and I'll come to my align and distribute menu. I'm going to turn this fill and stroke off which align and distribute is here under object. Mine's always open on the side, but if it's not, you can click here and that'll open it up. And with the align and distribute, I'm gonna select to align it vertically and horizontally. So that ring is now perfectly centered inside the other ring. Now this horseshoe, as you can see, it's not quite fitting because I went with different thicknesses on the rings and. I don't even know if this one over here is symmetrical, but now I can just select my horseshoe, I'll hold control and size it down just a little bit. Then I can pull it up. I will select this ring here or this ring, it doesn't matter. With this selected, I'll select this and center that vertically. I, I don't really need to do it horizontally because I, I want it to drop down and touch that bottom ring. But anyway right about there okay now I'm gonna grab this original image and drag it out of the way so it's not messing with her eyes there I'm also gonna turn off my page border and do that in document properties come down here to the bottom and uncheck show page border that makes this just a little easier to see what's going on now I'm gonna select this ring and this ring because those aren't actually paths yet those are still just shapes and I'm gonna come up here to object or no path stroke to path sorry and convert both of those to a path now as you can see both of those are paths with inner and outer contours and nodes so now to make this monogram here where you can add text to it all that's left to do is select this horseshoe select the inner ring the outer ring and do path union and now I'll change the color to black that is all one path ready to edit and add the font into so we've created our monogram like this one over here and now we want to add the font into it I've covered this before in other videos but we'll go ahead and do it again here so first thing I'm gonna do is come over here and grab my circle tool I'm going to hold control and pull down. That keeps it symmetrical when I hold control. 
and then I'm going to turn off the fill color by hitting the X down here and I'm going to turn on my stroke by holding shift and selecting blue because I want a, a contrasting color for my stroke because I need to be able to see what's going on. Okay now I'm going to grab this and pull it out holding control and I want to get this closer to the size of this inner ring. Now I'm going to hold shift and select my design. I use my align and distribute menu to center it vertically and horizontally. I need to be a little bigger so let's pull that up a little more. I'll align and distribute it again. It's getting closer. probably in there somewhere it doesn't have to be perfect I just want to get it close to this contour here without actually going over because I want to be able to see this contour to make sure my font is actually touching there so anyway now I have my circle there and this is not a path it's still a circle I'm gonna select my font and I'll zoom out here real quick so we get our our name we're gonna this Rancho del Oro so I'll type that out oh forgot space there and I'm gonna go ahead and type the established 2021 because I want to size them the same so alright now I'm gonna come in here I'll zoom in a little I'm gonna change the color of the font and I'm gonna drag that hold control and drag out on that by holding control and dragging out that keeps it symmetrical without distorting it and make sure I have it close to fitting there it might actually went a little over but let's see here come down just a little Yeah, that ought to touch top and bottom. So now I'm going to select just the Rancho del Oro, hold shift, and I'm going to select that blue circle that I made. And then I'm going to go text, put on path. That's going to put that text on that blue circle. Now, just the circle, I'm going to select it, double click it to get my rotation handles here. And I'm going to rotate that around to the top, roughly in there. I'm going to move this out of the way a little bit. Now I need to, as you can see, my font's descending down a little farther than what this is on the ring. It won't really hurt anything, but if you wanted to tighten that up, you could come to your text editor here, click over here, yeah, right there, <laughs> and drag around, follow the contour of the font, select them all, and then you can use this spacing between letters and adjust those a little tighter if you wanted you know maybe something like that I don't whatever you you wanted okay now I'm going to click off I'm gonna select just the circle again and rotate that a little more now at this point I can come up here in this toolbar here on the measuring part here if I click in here and pull down it'll pull down a guide bar to align this horizontally. I'll pull it down roughly, oop, hit the wrong thing there. It's selecting the font on me. Okay. Now I'll put it roughly there, I'll double click that circle, and now I can adjust this around and get it to where it looks like that font's pretty lined up on that horizontally. Let's see if I adjust that now, it's right about the tip of the R and the edge of the zero that should work so now I need to make sure that my font is actually touching top and bottom as you can see I'm buried using the different colors it really helps but I'm touching way into the bottom circle and barely touching in some spots the top so what I would do there is I can use my text tool again highlight this font and now if I hold alt and hit the arrow up button I can arrow up a couple times yeah. click off now when I come in here you can see now I'm touching top and bottom everything's got a really good connection there that should work
so now that's lined up side to side the fonts touching everything's lined up I can just come up here to path object to path convert that to a path now I can change the color to black I'm basically done with that till the end so now I need to put this established 2021 on the bottom I select it hold shift and select that circle now I will go text put on path now I can click off click just the circle and use this here flip it vertically and that will flip the text from the outside of the circle to the inside of the circle now I can click off select just the circle grab my rotation handles and pull this around roughly where it needs to be now obviously we need to get the font on the outside of that curve so we'll select our text editor click here highlight and drag this around to select all the letters now I can hold alt and the arrow down key and you can step it down or you can just hold it and it'll bump it out and I'll run that font out to where it touches inside and outside and looks like it's lined up let's see here now I can zoom in that looks pretty close that will definitely work so now I want to make sure that's aligned horizontally I can pull this guide bar down here it looks like it needs to be adjusted a little so I'll click off select just the circle again double click it to get the rotation handles and I can pull that around to where that's centered up looks like it's touching the edge there touching it there now that I've got that lined up I don't need this anymore if you just hover over it until you get your little hand there click it and drag it put it back up here into the measurement bar and now it's gone that gets rid of it so now I can select my font it's where I want it it's lined up and I can just come up here to path object to path now both of my fonts are turned into paths I can change this to a black now I can select this circle and backspace or edit delete either one that gets rid of it we won't need it anymore now my font is where I want it it's lined up everything's touching now I can select everything well now first I need to select my font as you can see those are groups and I'll need to shift control G or object ungroup to ungroup those because it won't let us union if they're a group now I can select everything and go path union and that's now all one path so now this is ready to use as a cut file other than this is font and font always is going to need some cleanup so you're going to need to go around in node editor and check your nodes and clean them up delete the ones you don't need probably too I used a font with feet on it and a lot of times you're going to have spots where it didn't quite touch or a spot like this where that's pretty much useless that doesn't need to cut so what I would do here is grab a hold of that node and drag it over to this one and then select all three hover over till that one lights red and then hit shift J and just join those into one node and get rid of that little divot there it won't need it but other than going around and fixing little spots like that cleaning up some excess nodes this is done and ready to cut so same here I'd join those no point in having that little divot there but you work your way around clean up some of these excess nodes get rid of any little spots like that that aren't necessary and won't add any quality to the cut and clean it up and then send it to the cutter save it as a DXF and an SVG for future editing hopefully that helps some people out thanks for watching